Welcome to We Chats with Brilliant People, hosted by Dr. Allison Rodius, Professor of Sports Psychology at John F. Kennedy University. In each episode, Allison talks to highly successful people in music, sport, and the boardroom. She digs into the mental training techniques that they use to ride out the waves that challenge them in work and in life. So enjoy these wee chats with brilliant people. And welcome back to We Chats with Brilliant People. I am here again with my world champion friend, Leslie Patterson. And we're talking today about her mental preparation for the world championships that just happened a few weeks ago in Maui and also what the race itself was like and what life has been like since the world champs. So, Leslie, oh, where do you start? Where do you start? <laughs> a juicy topic for you. So maybe I could just take you back. However, I don't, you know, I don't really have an idea in mind about when to start the conversation, but you know, just in general, maybe you could say about mental preparation in general, yep. and then if it was any different for the world champs, or yep. if it was the same. Maybe just. Yep, yep definitely. It was. Um, this year, I'd say it was different. I've had a lot of trials and tribulations with illness and injury and stuff like that, and yeah. so um, while I felt I was fit. I sort of didn't know how I was going to feel on any given day and so I think throughout that journey um, I've learned to kind of let go a little bit and not overanalyze how I feel on a minute by minute day by day basis and be okay with that because I've performed when I felt terrible and I've also mm. underperformed when I've gone when I felt great mm. so I think um, it was more about sort of letting go so this year I went out to the race 10 days before which is a lot for me and uh, normally I don't like to go out to races early because I get nervous I get caught up in the environment and it sort of saps me of energy or so I thought mm -hmm. um, but this year we were allowed to check out the course and then off-road travel and that's really important so uh, for, for mental and physical preparation to understand the course and the technicalities of it and stuff like that so I went out 10 days earlier and, and, and got to pre-ride the course, pre-run the course and ended up staying with a bunch of really fun guys. And you know, just to clarify, you never normally do this? Never norm normally do this. Normally go out right. like two days before, rock up, you know, treat it like whatever, you know, that seems to have been quite a good preparation for me. But this year, um, and I think, and I know why I do that, I do that because if I put too much time and effort into it and a lot of investment, then I've got a lot to lose if I don't do well. Right. So that's my little tactic for, you know, oh, it doesn't really mean anything. So that when I fail, it doesn't really mean anything. So anyways, um, I, um, yeah, so I had a great time leading up to the race and um, actually felt more and more comfortable being there and being there with other people that I enjoy being with. Mm -hmm. And throughout the course, I created these little memories with these friends mm -hmm that I knew I would utilize on race day. Um, you know, whether it was a joke or a laugh or a specific moment where I felt good. Um, so that was great. Um, and then uh, leading up to the race itself, I, I, was, I was pretty nervous because um, I, I think, I thought I probably had a good chance to, to win. So um, leading up sort of minute by minute, I felt pretty crappy the day before. Um, what does that mean? Just sluggish and my muscles felt really heavy and I felt really like <clears throat> bloated and I was like wow I feel really cruddy here. This is not going to be pretty tomorrow. Mm. Um, and then the morning of the race I felt pr pretty crappy too. Um, not that energised um, but I felt like that before and going well so I didn't get too stressed out about it but certainly on the way to the race Simon my husband was like wow it's like taking a bunch of soldiers to the front line. <laughs> It was just a really intense really? atmosphere. Oh yeah, it's really intense. More intense than ever before, or is that always intense for an event? It's always intense for an event, but it was definitely kind of at the height of intensity. <laughs> it's just a really sort of weird atmosphere. Um, so we get to the race, and I kind of just like to do my own deal. Um, and as I said, I didn't feel amazing in my warm ups. I was like, okay, let's just see how it goes. And then uh, in triathlon, you know, with a swim, quite often they make you wait at the start of the swim for ages, and I was feeling really nervous. But luckily, as soon as the gun went off, I actually relaxed. I think I was so relieved. Yeah. It was the last race in the season. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness it's off. 
And um, I guess I could talk through the race and what, what Yeah, let happened. me just ask you, yeah. before you get to that bit, when you say you were really nervous, is there um, differentiation in terms of like, do you feel it in a certain part of your body? Is it all in your head? What, what no, happens to you? Yeah, it's in my stomach and it's all over my body. So my body kind of feels like jelly. Mm -hmm. um, like I don't have control of it. Yeah. And it feels sort of jelly, but weighted jelly, <laughs> you know? <laughs> weighted jelly. Like, you know, I've got stump, uh, like I can't breathe. Do you have to say jello for the American? Oh, jello. Jello. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we like jelly. Jello. <laughs> Strawberry. <Which flavor>? okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's, um, okay. But the the moment that the that it went off, yep. you were the, like, okay, I was um. I was okay, but that doesn't actually normal ha normally happen to oh. me. And when everyone says, oh yeah, you're nervous now, but when the gun goes off, you'd be fine. Never. I can be nervous for a whole race sometimes, which for me is like two, three, four hours, um, which is a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time to be nervous. It is. It's not at a high level. level. Yeah. I know. So, um, anyways, I think when I was so relieved to be finally going that I wasn't as nervous and then by not being nervous I was like, oh great, I'm not nervous. So that made me feel even less nervous and great. Oh, I feel, so, yeah, so you, you felt like you could push and go. kind of go. And so I had a really crappy first lap of the swim and I was way behind where I wanted to be and normally I can sometimes get in that negative pattern where I'm like, I knew this would happen, I can't believe this, da -da -da -da, all that kind of stuff, you know. Oh, I've just not got what it takes, all that negative talk. Um, and then I was like, no, I have. I've done the training. Like, just shut up. You know? <laughs> so like, you're having this dialogue yeah, the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. On like, that first just lap. Just shut up. So off I, like I, off I go in the second lap and um, and I start catching up the people I needed to be with. And I come out of the water with the people I, you know, that I trained to come out with. Um, and I'd been practicing my transitions uh, all week and I've never really properly done that before. Mm. And transitions are really important in triathlon because you can make up, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds of time in a transition. And again, I think I've never really practiced them because it's almost that fear of if you put everything. everything on the line and you still come up short, you'll be like, well, what else can I do? And you'll feel like a failure. So anyway, I did all that, came out of transition right where I wanted to be. I'm like this is it, you know, and everyone's screaming at me, my husband's screaming at me, and um, I, I hit the edge of a kind of a log on my tyre, and I notice that something's kind of squidgy and weird, and I'm like, wow, I've got a flat tyre, yeah. and I never have had a flat tyre in a race before, I'm like, are you kidding me right now, <laughs> oh, brutal. are you kidding me, <laughs> like, you know, I've, I'm in this race, I know I have potential to win, everything's lining up. You've never had a flat tire? I've never had a flat tire in a race before. Because oh. I'm so light, it doesn't really happen that often. Yeah. So, and I've had very few mechanicals. <laughs> so, speaking of which, I get off my bike and, you know, when you're not used to changing tires, which I'm not, I'm not that mechanically minded. So, everything's rushing through your head. One, I can't believe this has just happened. Everything I've just worked for is riding away from me. Um, you know, what happens if I can't fix it? Then I can't even finish the race. All of those things. Yeah. So I tried to remain calm and I get the stuff out of the pouch to fix it and I manage to fix it to some degree, hop back on the bike and it starts to go flat again. And I'm like, well, maybe I can just get away with riding on it. Because you can, you can get away with actually really quite flat tires on a mountain bike for traction and stuff. Hmm. So I'm going another mile along the road and I'm going down this descent and the tire almost comes off because it's just getting way too flat. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I have to stop again, and this time I've only got one more CO2 cartridge for air, so if I use it up, it, it, it's like all or nothing. Is it? So all these pro girls are passing me, all these other people are passing me, I fill it up, it makes this pop sound which tells me that it's kind of seated on the tyre and it's probably going to be okay. Hop back on the bike and I'm like, okay I'm now about two minutes down on where I should be. Mm. and. I'm like, well, I guess that was it, <laughs> you know, so I was in a super negative state of mind for about five minutes. Did you feel like giving up at all? Yeah. Um, actually, no, I didn't feel like giving up. I felt like giving up um, when I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fix it, like just walking back to transition. Right. But I was like, heck, I'm going to come for the workout. This is a great course. 
<laughs> at least I'm in Maui. That's right. At least I'm getting to work out yeah. and then eat some chocolate pie at night. Fine. So, anyways, I, I I start climbing up this hill and I start. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like, well, I'll just you know, I didn't feel nervous anymore. I was just kind of bummed out. Oh. I start passing this other pro girl that had beaten me on the bike in another race and I thought, well, if I'm passing her, I'm actually going pretty well on the bike here, so why not just go as hard as I can and who cares? Yeah. So I think because I got the puncture, I ended up not caring anymore. Whereas normally I care and I get all nervous and anxious mm -hmm. and I don't sort of come to my full potential. Mm -hmm. um, so I came in off the bike actually in fourth position, but I was six and a half minutes down in the lead and normally that kind of information would bum me out. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. I was like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I came to win this and I'm not going to win it. So what does it matter? So um, I just, I felt amazing on the run and everything was just relaxed because I didn't care anymore. Because it's the hardest thing as an elite athlete to not care about this thing that you really care the most about. Because this is what you're there right. for. This is, yeah. That's but but I find about. if I care too much, it gives me too much anxiety and I can't perform physically the way I know I can. So anyways, throughout the run, I started catching these girls and all of a sudden I'm in second position. And I think in the past, I probably would have been like, well, second at Worlds, that's pretty damn good. And a lot of my performances in the past have been about me not wanting to feel embarrassed at my position. So second's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than last or 10th or whatever, you know, and I got a puncture, so now it's all justified. And then I thought, I'm not gonna do this to myself because I know I've got the ability to keep pushing and, and all I want is to get to the end of the race knowing I tried everything to mm -hmm. get as far up as I could. And that's, I remember specifically one point in the run thinking every step has to count. Um, and, and that was something that you That was quite mentioned. a new thing, yeah. But that's quite a new thing for me. Yeah. Uh, it just came to you in the race? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, yeah. And, and nice. I thought, if I, I just want to get to the end of a race and feel like I gave it everything and that I didn't cop out. Right. And if that's first, it's first. If it's 10th, it's 10th. But what's happened in the past to me is I've not done that. I've copped out, you know, and come second or third and being like, well, I still keep saying that, you know. So, um, anyways, as I'm going through the run and normally I get really nervous as I'm catching people up and there's a chance that I might win or do something I get like a lot of anxiety even while I'm racing and I didn't I just felt uber relaxed just kind of like it was more about me and how fast I could run and how much I could push myself rather than the end result I wonder if um and again correct me if I you know I'm not giving this uh the right idea but you know is it something that you just got to the point where you're like well like you said you know I've got nothing to lose but you hadn't felt like that before you know and, and you said you didn't care necessarily you know you did you did care probably yeah. but you just thought about it in a different way yeah totally. and you know for the that for the first time you really thought well I'm gonna lay everything out there yeah. in a way that I haven't done before right and you know I had come second before right and it was like, well, if I'm not winning, then it's something I've done before. Yeah. So who cares if I blow up? Like, who cares? It doesn't matter. You know? You didn't um, want to come second again? I didn't want to come second again. And especially not with having had a puncture. Because then I would have been like, oh, man, if I hadn't had the puncture, I would have won. That would be brutal. You know? But that, that's just the way the sport is, right? Things yeah. happen all the time to everyone, yeah. and they don't win things because of those reasons. So, yeah, it was a different way of thinking. It was just having all the same thoughts and feelings, but just repositioning it. Um, and that seems to work really well for me. Repositioning. Yeah, yeah. So. so how do you think you'll take that information going on, you know, going forward now? Because you haven't raced yep. since. That was the last no. race, last race of the season. Yep. How do you think you can you know, take that information and help you in the future? I think self-belief that, that, that I can not cop out <laughs> and, and push that hard, mm -hmm. that's one thing. And, and being okay that there's going to be ups and downs, you know? I, I just don't think that it's realistic to all of a sudden just because I've 
gotten this caliber of race that everything's going to be magical from now on and I've been in this sport way too long mm -hmm. you're going to have your good ones and your bad ones but now I think I've got the information and the skill to if I am having a bad one reposition and be able to get the most out of that race whatever that is or wherever that takes me so it is what we were talking about before, like having a good shitty day, you yep. might be, things might not be going your way, you might not wake up feeling great, but yep. you make the most of every opportunity. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's it's really hard to do because you, you come into those races with so much expectation on your shoulder from your friends and your family and the people that you know are watching you online and whatnot. And so it's finding a way to push all that aside and focus on yourself and what you've you know, your kind of job at hand and just the sort of, the, the, the magic of doing it rather than the end result, mm. you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, because I, I can't focus on the, the firsts and I want to come podium spot on one of this and one of that. I mean, you have your goals, but my goal is just to truly, like if, 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 if I could think of anything I can take away from that race, it's not being world champion. It's actually that sensation of being in that zone and being in that tunnel. That's what I crave. So whether it's to come fourth or whether it's to win a race or whether it's to come last, it's feeling that feeling is my driving force. Yeah. Do you think you can have both? Do you think you can have the desire to win and you can have that, that inner drive as well to do the best you possibly can? Um... Or is it either or, or a bit? I mean, I think you're always going to have a desire to win if you're at my level. Well, if you're at, you know, at my level. Um, Even at my level. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I still have a desire to yeah. win and do yeah. the best, but I think some people it's an either or. I, I love right. to win and, right. you know, the other component, the process isn't as important. Right. It's all about the outcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, for some people, the process is everything and the outcome is, you know, the icing on the cake. Is. Right. And for some people, it's a bit of both. Yeah. You know, I love to win and, know, and there is what I know I need to do in yep. order to get there and I love this. It's definitely a bit of both, but I'm definitely more of a process person. Definitely. Because the amount of training we have to put in, yeah. the amount of races we have to do, um, the amount of times that you might just not have a good race or how competitive the races are and you might come in 10th. If, if, if I deemed my only success to be whether or not I won, I'd be having a lot of failures. And that's kind of how I looked at the sport initially when I was younger. And so everything's a failure. And you're like, wow, this is great. Everything's mm -hmm. a failure. And it really, you know, for someone at my caliber, it, it can't, that's what it ends up becoming. And, you, and, and I don't want to live my life like that. I want to find a success in everything that I do, so therefore it has to be more process oriented. Do you find success every day? Yes. Even if it's success because I failed. You know, people people see that as polar opposites, like, you know, it was a failure or it was, or it was a success, right? right? They're syn synonyms, however you pronounce them. But ultimately, if I failed in any given thing in a day, that's kind of a success because I've pushed the boundaries and I know where those boundaries are. Right. Or I've learned something about myself. It's going to be good ammunition for when a situation like Worlds arises. Yeah. Um, if everything's just going well all the time, it's it's kind of, you're not really learning that much, yeah. you know, about how to really progress to the next level. And I, I you know, that's the stuff I love. So the last little part about this, let me just, uh, I, I think I've, I cut you off before you got to the last little bit. I want you to just, did you want to talk about the last little bit, was the, which was the run and oh, the, yeah. finishing on the beach and all that stuff? And Yeah, um, so on the run when I'd passed and I'd gone into the lead, um, it's pretty overwhelming, you know. Obviously you're working really hard, you're exhausted, you're at the end of the race. Uh, just at the point where a pastor, my husband was there shouting and screaming and I ended up tripping and falling in a really technical part and bur bursting my knee open and I'm like, oh my god, Parson, what are you doing, you know? <laughs> and it's that, you, you get that sensation again, like that, I'm on the edge of a cliff and I'm going to drop. Like, what would happen if I just like stopped right now? You know, <laughs> what would happen if I tripped and fell and then someone passed me? It would be one of those awful sports moments, you know, when you're like 100 yards from the line and something <laughs> happens. So all I could think about was getting to the end and not like, don't think, don't think, don't think, don't think. No, I'm not going to let myself, you know, go there. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm just out in a stroll with my buddies, you know. 
that's that's kind of where my head was at until the last like 25 yards and then you're like okay I've done it and even then it doesn't really sink in because you've been in this zone right and yeah. then all of a sudden you're like ah! <laughs> so it was a weird sensation you know because you're having to keep focused in that last bit because in exterior racing they always put in the hard stuff last yeah and you're like what happens if I cramp and that stuff happens yeah. like you all of a sudden you can cramp or collapse or fall over or have a heart attack I don't know. <laughs> okay! It didn't happen. It didn't happen. I got to end. Thank God you saw it. Anyway. Well, the last little th bit I wanted to ask you about was um, what's happened since. Yep. So, uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, leave that till next time and I will ask Leslie next time what has she been doing since the World Champs. Tune in then. Yay! Yay! Who enjoyed these wee chats? You can follow WeChats with brilliant people on Twitter at WeChats and Facebook and subscribe to the podcast series on iTunes or any Droid platform. WeChats with brilliant people.